There are several SDKs to interact with AWS that include an SDK for Android, iOS, Java, .NET, to name a few. But especially when you are working as a DevOps engineer, using AWS command line interface or AWS CLI and AWS tools for Windows PowerShell becomes very handy. You can directly invoke AWS services using your familiar PowerShell tools. AWS tools for PowerShell is a set of PowerShell modules that allows you to invoke AWS services. All our EC2 instance comes with AWS PowerShell uh, tools installed if it is uh, a Windows uh, Amazon machine image. But uh, if you don't have uh, AWS tools for PowerShell installed, for example, in your laptop, you can easily install that uh, from an MSI installer that you can download from Amazon website. So this is an MSI installer. Uh, you just uh, click next, 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 and it will install that uh, PowerShell tools. And once installed, you will have PowerShell module called AWS PowerShell. Time to time, we release new versions. Of course, you need to update them uh, once a new version is released. Once these PowerShell modules are loaded, you can easily invoke AWS services. For example, to get an S3 bucket, uh, you can say get S3 bucket commandlet uh, and give the name of the bucket, and you can get details of that bucket. There are a lot of commands for all of our services. Most of our APIs are exposed in PowerShell, so I'm not going into details of each and individual command because it's taking a long time but we'll study the basic concepts around these PowerShell commands. You don't need to learn all these commands. It's only when it is needed, you go there and then refer to this PowerShell document and then learn how to invoke these commands. The first concept that you need to learn is how you are going to provide access credentials. If you are interacting with AWS using AWS console, the credentials that you use to access the service when you try to uh, list down or when you try to read or when you try to modify are the access credentials that you use in your console. But when you are trying to invoke API using a commandlet or through uh, some kind of a, a framework, you need to provide access credentials. When you run a command, the tools for PowerShell search for credentials in a certain order. You can specify the access credentials uh, in the command itself. Although you can do that, we do not recommend it. A, if you are scripting it, you are going to uh, hard code that value. B, um, if you specify in the command line, uh, when these command lines are uh, returned as log files, you are keeping the important credentials in log files. So we don't recommend you to uh, provide the credentials in the command line itself, but it's a possibility. You can also specify a profile where you keep the secret key and uh, secret access keys uh, in a profile. These profiles are kept in the user folder. And when you're executing the command, you can specify which profile to use. So that's one possibility. If the specified profile location is not found, the command throws an exception and um, it proceeds to the next steps if you do not specify a profile or profile location. You can specify the credentials in the credential parameter. So all our PowerShell commands comes with this parameter. You can also use the session profile so that you don't need to specify the credentials for each and individual command that you're executing. So if, if that fails, uh, the PowerShell will fall back into the default profile. And uh, if the default profile also is not available, it will use the profile of the EC2 instance. You can attach an EC2 instance profile to the instance that you are running. And when you are running a command inside, if the search order result in using of the EC2 instance profile, what will happen is uh, the whatever the permission given to that EC2 instance profile is taken and the command uses that credentials to access the uh, AWS services. This is a very handy method because you don't need you don't need to specify the credentials or the access key and secret keys inside the EC2 instance. Uh, you can automatically obtain this information from the instance profile itself. 
We will use this method a lot in our lab series because what we are going to do is to attach an instance profile to the built agent. So whenever a build happens and it wants to release a software, the built agent will have magically have the permissions required to it to invoke or interact with AWS services. You can also do with the same thing with your development lab machine where you are going to attach certain permissions into the instance profile so that when you are running commands, you don't need to specify access credentials. We will go into PowerShell and then try to learn how these uh, credentials uh, are working. And from that, you will learn uh, different methods that you can provide credentials to PowerShell. I'm in my development machine. Let's start PowerShell. And once I started it, if I type get AWS PowerShell version, you can find the version of the PowerShell installed in my machine. I get this commandlet because I have already installed AWS tools for Windows PowerShell. So this comes as an MSI package, which you can easily install in your laptop, for example. But if it is an EC2 instance uh, with Windows operating system environments that you get from Amazon provided machine image, these tools are already installed on those EC2 instances. So time to time we do release new versions, which in that case you need to update this PowerShell version. A good starting point to learn AWS PowerShell is AWS tools for PowerShell documentation. You can get the install also from here, but if you want to go for documentation, you can select the documentation here. If you go to the documentation, it explains uh, all the details, uh, things like how to set the credentials to access AWS services, what's the credential search order, and so on. If you want to know the commandlets, you can search AWS PowerShell command references, and it will take you to the commandlet references. There are extensive number of commands available to interact with most of our AWS services. So the objective of this lesson is not to teach you all these commands. The objective is to teach you some basic PowerShell commands and how to set up the proper credentials. So when the need comes, you can easily use PowerShell and you will refer to this document as and when needed. The command that I'm interested in is called uh, is related to a simple storage service so i search uh, simple storage service and it has a one called get s3 bucket so if you go to get s3 bucket it lists your amazon s3 buckets and you can provide the bucket name if you want to get detail about that bucket the parameter related to this command is this bucket name and uh, use dual stack endpoint and common credentials and region parameters are given here, like access tree, credentials, profile locations. So these things specify how we are going to pass credentials to this command so that it has enough permissions to access AWS services. And they are common for all AWS commandlets. So if you know how to use these commands, these um, uh, uh, credentials providing methods for this get S3 bucket, you can use the similar method for other commandlets as well. So let's first go to our AWS console and then try to create an S3 bucket so that I can use this command. I'm in my AWS console. If you go into S3, I already have one bucket here. Let's create a new bucket. In the region that I'm uh, working, in this case, it's a Sydney region. I'm running this lab environment. I'm going to create a bucket uh, with the name like my uh, awesome testing bucket. This name may not be available for you. So in that case, you can either add some kind of uh, prefix or you can add uh, suffix or give some random name. The name of this bucket really doesn't matter. You just need to create a bucket with some kind of a name. Click next, click next, click next, and your bucket will be created. So I have a bucket called my awesome testing bucket. 
if I go into my command and open the PowerShell and I type get s3 bucket and I type the bucket name equals my awesome testing bucket and then press enter if I have credentials you can find that it gave an access denied error the reason for that is that I don't have access to this bucket or AWS metadata services to get details about this bucket information so how can I provide credentials to this uh, access these details or to execute this command There are multiple ways you can do that. And the ways to provide credentials are given here. So let's explore different ways that you can provide access keys or credentials to execute this command.